So, hello everyone to my short presentation about DL2 and high order coupling with Precise. My name is David Schneider and I'm one of the main contributors of all DL2 related things around Precise. In the following few minutes I would like to introduce you to some of our concepts and give you some insight into our current work. First of all I would like to introduce DL2 itself, so for those of you who have never heard of it, I would like to give you an impression of how the user interface looks like and how to use DL2. Afterwards I would like to introduce the DL2 adapter. Maybe this is one of the uh, programs you've already seen when you come from the precise side because this is also one of the adapter we host on GitHub in one of our official repositories. Afterwards I would like to give you an introduction of how to couple DL2 programs and what's behind the DL2 adapter and to the very end I will provide some application examples and showcases. So then let's start. What is DL2? DL2 is a general purpose C++ program library targeted at the computational solution of partial differential equations. It's available under an open source license and hosted on GitHub uh, similar to precise. So if you're interested in recent work, recent contributions, or if you want to contribute yourself to DIL2, you can always look on the GitHub page of DIL2. DIL2 itself provides algorithms and data structures for finite elements on adaptive meshes. But they also have support for similar numerical methods such as discontinuous Galerkin methods or particle methods. Uh, the library supports also various types of meshes, so until version 9.2, which has been released in the last year, they only support hexahedral meshes, but in the upcoming release, version 9.3, they will also support tetrahedral meshes and all kind of mixed and hybrid meshes. The programming framework is oriented on state-of-the-art computational methods, and they have distributed memory support via MPI, but also threading, GPUs or vectorization. They also provide uh, lots of interfaces for external libraries, uh, such as Trilinos or Petsy. And they also have a high performance framework called Matrix Free for highly scalable programs. However, it is important to note that DL2 does not contain ready-to-use solvers as you might know them from other software packages such as OpenFoam, where you directly download the framework and various solvers which can directly be used within the framework. DL2 rather supports the creation of your own finite element program. And in order to get familiar with the data structures, and DL2, they provide many well-documented tutorial codes ranging from basic techniques to advanced applications and mechanics. I have an extract here from the steps map where you can see how the individual tutorial codes depend on each other. So, for example, in order to go through tutorial code 4, you might want to go to tutorial steps 1 to 3 before in order to understand what's going on in step 4. If you start with your own project uh, in DL2, it's rather unlikely that you're going to write everything from scratch because there are very different topics covered in the tutorial codes and it's very likely that you find some related field already in the tutorial codes. In addition to the usual tutorial codes, DL2 offers also a code gallery which is also hosted on GitHub but in a separate repository. And the code gallery is an opportunity for users and others to share their code when using DL2 or to show a specific application how they work with DL2. And I would like to point out that we also contributed here a precise related example. I marked it down here with an arrow. So we constructed a minimal working example of a DL2 coupling with Precise. And if you're interested in coupling your own DL2 code using Precise, uh, this is probably the best place to start. In order to give you an impression of how the API of DL2 looks like, I included a small code example 
In this case, I steal it from the step 3 tutorial, which covers the Laplace equation. So we would like to solve the linear system AU equals F, where A is my Laplace matrix and F is my right-hand side vector. So the local assembly step would look like the following in deal 2. We have a loop over all quadrature point and we have a loop over all columns and over all rows of my local cell matrix. Then we ask deal 2 for the shape gradient, which is the gradient of the shape function. In this case we have one entry here for the test function and one entry for the solution function. So we have grad phi i and grad phi j, which can also be seen here in the formulas. And at the very end we have this mnemonical expression j times w, which is short for Jacobian times quadrature weight. Uh, and one can think of this as the integration part, so the dx over the local finite element. The cell right hand side looks very similar, so in contrast to the shape gradient we have here the shape value, which can also be seen here in the formula. And for the f we have simply chosen here a 1, and again we have uh, the integration part at the end. So if you know how the weak form of your equation looks like, the local implementation is rather straightforward. But the question is for us, how do we develop a general DL2 adapter for such a program? Because DL2 gives the user a maximum amount of freedom to implement whatever they want in which order they want. And we cannot assume certain structures as opposed to, for example, open foam. And in the end, we don't provide a general adapter, but rather coupled codes with different purposes. So on the one hand, we have our coupled structural solvers, which can be used for FSI simulations. So for example, in case you have already your fluid code and are looking for another structure code, this is one use case and we have different flavors of our implementations and all of these flavors are available on github and if you install deal2 and precise via package manager for example on ubuntu these codes are really easy to use and the other use case is to provide some predefined functionality for your own project so similar to bindings you can copy parts of the coupling strategy for your own project. And hopefully you find then good answers on questions like how to define a coupling interface or how to obtain relevant coupling data from DL2, how to modify my solver. And this was also the motivation to contribute a minimally complex example in the DL2 code gallery as I've already shown before. And I would like to discuss now some ideas behind the DL2 adapter in general. The first point to discuss is how to define a coupling interface. Because in the case of DL2 we can select an arbitrary high polynomial degree so that we get an arbitrary high space discretization inside our finite element and we would like to preserve this high order property as good as we can across our coupling interface. I tried to illustrate all available options in my example element on the right hand side here. So we have the element vertices here in white in the corners. Then we have in blue the quadrature point where the location certainly depends on the underlying quadrature formula. And we have our finite element support points which can be used for coupling. Uh, but also the location again depends on our underlying finite element. So if we choose the element vertices, we are of course independent of the space discretization and that's probably a bad choice because we lose our typical subset resolution across our interface. If we use now quadrature points or support points for our coupling, what precise would see is depicted in the figure on the right hand side here. So this is really a mesh as generated by export VTK by precise itself. So don't be confused by any missing nodes because precise filters nodes out in case they are not required for the mapping. 
but what we can see very clearly here is that the coupling mesh has non equally distributed coupling nodes and this can in particular lead to ill-conditioned systems if we construct an RBF interpolant in such a mesh. Usually we have one conditioning for each mapping problem, so in case of a coupled simulation where both participants exchange two datasets, we have usually two conditionings for each dataset one. For example, if we choose consistent data, the RBF conditioning is determined on the right participant, so the participant providing the specific data. For example, if we have an FSI simulation, our structural solver provides the displacement data and therefore the conditioning is determined on the solid solver. However, reading data, which is consistent on quadrature points, is not a problem. And also, using quadrature points for reading is highly desired because then we have the data directly where it is required in order to assemble our system for our finite element codes. Therefore, we would like to use the quadrature points for reading. And this is also what we do in DD2. And this is maybe a little bit different from what other coupled codes do. Because if we look again at the coupling condition, what most of the people do is they integrate the stress times the normal vector on the fluid side and then map it on the solid side and apply here directly the boundary conditions. But what we do in case of D2 is we map the consistent stress on the fluid side on the solid side and then we integrate it on the solid side. So we are kind of free to choose here the integrating participant and determine the data type if we want to map consistent or conservative. And in case of the two, we map the data consistent. This way we are still left with the problem how to define our right mesh on which we provide data because we should not simply use quadrature points or support points for our coupling. And one potential solution strategy would be to use equidistant coupling nodes. This is also illustrated on the figure on the right hand side here. This is again an export mesh from Precise via export BTK. And doing so we can preserve a well conditioned RBF system. And one nice side effect of this method is that we can control the mapping error because we can simply increase the data sampling within an element in order to decrease the mapping error. The overall topic is also relevant for DG methods because this way we also avoid data sampling at cell interfaces so we don't have any discontinuities at our cell interfaces. But all in all these methods are rather tedious and it is an active development topic in order to get rid of these problems, so in particular the ill-conditioned RBF systems. The main point here is that you don't need to care so much about these things because they are already implemented in the DL2 adapter and you can likely reuse them for your own project. In particular the initialize, advance and the checkpointing related functions don't change so much independent of the physical aspects. The only tricky part is that you need to know your coupling condition and you need to know how it affects your linear system. I have again a coding example here of how this looks like in case of the linear elasticity code. Here we used support points for our coupling, so we are reading here, it's okay. First of all we have a loop over all faces and then we ask DIL2 whether the current phase is located at our coupling boundary. Afterwards we interpolate from our global vector, so our degrees of freedom, to our quadrature points, so this is get function values. Then we have again a loop over all quadrature points, over all degrees of freedom, and we simply integrate on our finite element boundary phase. So we have shape value, we have the quadrature point contribution and we have the j times w which is the dx. At the end I have some application examples here so we spend some time investigating the probably well-known Turek and Haron FSI benchmark 
and we validated it using the nonlinear solid solver and open form here. And you can also find the numerical setup of this case in our tutorial repository. All in all, I hope you have now an impression of how DL2 works and how the DL2 adapter works. We also try our best to document all these things so that you can read up about the details whenever you like. If you miss something there, please let us know. And if you have any questions, of course, feel free to ask them.